I want you to imagine installing an agent onto 100 Windows machines, and you log into Kibana to begin searching for PowerShell logs, only to find out that you forgot to configure the agent to forward PowerShell logs into your Elasticsearch instance. Now, you do have a couple of options. You can manually go through every 100 endpoints and configure the agent, or you can use a group policy to update all of your endpoints with the latest configuration. Or you can utilize a component that connects Elastic Agents to a fleet server, which will allow you to manage all of the agents in a centralized location. Welcome to day six of the 30 day My D for SOC Analyst Challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along with this challenge, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. In this video, I'll go over what a fleet server is and the Elastic Agent. Let's start off with the Elastic Agent. This agent provides us with a unified way to add monitoring for logs, metrics, and many other different types of data. These agents work based off of policies that you can update and add additional integrations, protections, and will be used to tell the endpoint on what logs it should forward to your Elasticsearch or Logstash instance. There are two different installation methods for an Elastic agent. You can install the agent as a standalone or fleet managed, which is what we will be using for this 30 day challenge. Now, if you recall in our day two discussion where I provided an introduction to the Elk stack, you might be wondering, what is the difference between a beat and an agent? Which one should I choose? Well, to recap, there are six different types of beats, and depending on what data you want to collect, you might need to install multiple beats on a single host. Whereas an Elastic Agent is one single agent that will collect various different types of logs, and they both will send data to either Elasticsearch or Logstash. When it comes to selecting which one to choose, it really depends on your use case. But more often than not, the Elastic Agent should suffice. I'll provide a link down below so you can see the full comparison between a beat and an agent. Next, let's talk about fleet servers. A fleet server is a component that connects your Elastic Agents to a fleet, which will allow you to manage multiple agents within a centralized location. This makes it super easy to update the agent's policy if you wanted to add new integrations for data ingestions, or if you wanted the agent to forward their data into a Logstash instance rather than Elasticsearch and vice versa. You can easily update these agents if a new version comes out, or perhaps you want to unenroll a particular agent. Well, you can do that pretty easily as well. Now, without a fleet server, you would need to look at other options anytime you want to update an agent's policy, which can be quite painful, especially if your option is to do it manually. And there you have it. I went over what a fleet server and an elastic agent is. And again, I'll provide a link down below for you to learn more about the differences between a beat and an agent, if you're interested. That concludes day six of the 30 day My D for SOC Analyst Challenge. In the next video, I'll show you how to install an elastic agent and how you can set up your own fleet server so your endpoints can enroll into a fleet for centralized management. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.